took this piece of spalted maple at my local lumber yard. It was in the scrap bin pile because it's in really bad shape, but there's some really cool grain and some really cool spalting. And I want to turn the bottom into a circle, but the only problem with circle cutting jigs that I have seen is that you have to put a, a screw or a nail or something in the center of your board to rotate it around some sort of blade. And I don't want to put a hole in the center of my board. So I'm going to make a jig using a hole saw, a router, and double-sided tape where I do not have to put a hole in the center of my board in order to make a circle. Wish me luck. After cleaning up the board a little bit, I took it to the bandsaw and made a horrible looking circle. You could also make a really bad circle with a jigsaw, I just needed to practice with my bandsaw a bit. I stayed really far from my lines. Now to make the circle perfect. <laughs> I'm going to make a jig where I attach a router onto this scrap piece of wood. So I marked out how thick I need the board to be in order to attach it to the router with the screws that it comes with. So I hogged away at all of the material on my table saw and after I cleaned it all up, I took the base plate that the router comes with and I marked out where the holes were. And I found the drill bits that were the correct size for the holes. First I drilled all the way through with the skinnier bit and then I countersunk with the bigger bit on the underside of the jig. Next I needed to find where the pivot point on the jig was going to be. So I marked the center of the jig and lined it up with the center of my circle and I extended the line out so that I could see where center is when I put the jig on top. Now I line up the bit with my cut line that I had made earlier and now I just bring those center lines up and over across the board and this is just way easier for me than having to do math. Back at the drill press, I used a hole saw to make a hole right at that center mark that I had just made. Well, a little bit off center, a little bit away from where the router would be to accommodate for the kerf that the hole saw leaves behind. And it's important to keep that little circle cookie thing that the hole saw leaves behind. That's an integral part of this jig. I screwed the router into the jig and then I put double-sided tape on that circle cookie, what are we calling it, that the hole saw left behind and use an X-Acto knife to cut away at all the excess. Then using the hole that's in the middle of that little cookie thing, I could see the center of the board and I'm able to place the cookie down with the double-sided tape right in the center of my board. Now comes the fun part. So you take the jig and you rotate it around the double stick tape cookie and there's a lot of movement in it because there's that kerf that the hole saw left behind. So the first pass, what you wanna do is make sure you're pushing the router towards the outside of the circle. So you're just taking off a little layer. And then the next layer, you push it in and it takes off the rest of it. And you just keep going around until you have a perfect circle. Using a router is really dangerous. So you wanna make sure that you have a really firm grip on the router and also a firm grip on the opposite side of the jig so that it's not gonna go anywhere. Since this circle was about two inches thick, I needed to do it in layers. So I just kept lowering the bit and doing it layer by layer. And I was recently on the Woodshop 101 podcast where I was discussing this router and how much I love it and how I preferred having a cord on a router. And this is actually one of those times where I kind of wish that I had the cordless version. <laughs> the bit that I was using wasn't long enough to go through the whole board, so I just flipped it over and used a flush trim bit to finish up the circle. There you have it, a perfect circle, and I did not have to make a hole in my board. I don't really know what I'm gonna use this yet for. I think I might use it for a stool, which wouldn't really matter. If you put a hole in the underside of a stool, you wouldn't see it anyway. But this is just another option, another way how to make a circle. Like let's say you wanted to make a cutting board and you wanted to be able to use both sides and you didn't want to have to fill any holes. So there's just many ways how to do this. And here's another way. I hope you learned something. And now I have to go figure out what to do with this. <laughs> If you like this video, consider subscribing, check out my website, or watch another one. Do you see any problems here? The spalted makeup. Makeup? Spalted makeup? <laughs> Ugh. I just thought of something cool I could do with that part. All right.